In January 2022, I made a lofty New Year's resolution to actually take YouTube a little bit more seriously. I had the goal of finally getting monetized because I wanted to use that as kind of a test of seeing how far and how serious I want to take this. And to be honest, I wanted Google to send me a little bread at the end of the month just because I've been making a lot of videos. Not only did we get to the monetization status and this channel does make a little bit of money, but we've actually grown to having 5,000 plus subscribers. But as a way of celebrating 5,000 subscribers, I actually wanted to do a Q&A video Video. So this is going to be a little bit more chilled out and sit down talking head So if you are looking for a bunch of test footage and gear reviews and accessories Go and watch other videos on this channel I did want to do a Q&A and I am gonna do them every milestone that this channel hits All right So the first question is can you get away with using a basic editing system when starting out or do you need a higher-end one? I think for most people like spending the least amount of money possible to get the desired job is a great place to start I will say after years of editing on different programs DaVinci Resolve does have a free version that does work pretty well. So if you want to look into that, you can just go on their website. It's free to download and you can start using a lot of those features right away. All right. So my boy Enrique asked creating video and the client wants horizontal and vertical versions of the same clips. Now I used to have to bring two cameras where I'd set one up vertically and one that's going to shoot in landscape. But what I did find that is on my Atomos monitors and a lot of monitors, you have something called frame guides where you could actually like set up a little preview on your screen of what the nine by 16 crop looks like. And then you can just film in landscape, but you know what it's gonna look when it's cropped. So when you have to make vertical and horizontal clips of the same thing, it's a lot easier to do. Now you do lose a little bit of resolution because you are still shooting in landscape and you can use a second camera, but generally if you want to have the cake and eat it too, frame guides on most monitors is a way to do it. Next question is Canon or Sony. Considering I went from the R5, C200 and the C70 to the FX6, the FX30 and the A7 IV, that should answer that question for you. That doesn't mean Canon has bad cameras, it's just it's not for me anymore. And just so you guys know, there is a small announcement, I guess, that's going to be something that might benefit some of you guys, so you have to stick around for a reasonable amount of time in this video in order to find out what that is. All right, so the next question is, would you consider getting into more street photography? And yes, in fact, I actually did a lot of street photography over the last couple of years when a lot of things were locked down. A way that I actually made money was I did a lot of street photography by waking up at four or five o'clock in the morning and actually mapping out locations I wanted to shoot at. And then the pictures that I ended up taking, I blew up in prints and I started selling them on social media. So I actually did do a lot of street stuff, a lot of more urban architecture, I would say more than straight up street photography, but I did do that. And I actually think I want to get back into doing that. So my boy, Ian Maroof, I used to play football with him. You probably already answered this question 50 times, but what was the first content camera you purchased? So technically it was the Sony A5000. So I did own Sony cameras before going to Canon, but actually when I started doing video and getting paid for it, it was the A6000 and a 50 millimeter lens. That was the only combination I had. That was, that was pretty much all I did uh, until I could afford other lenses and other cameras. The next question is music, how to choose. Uh, in fact, I don't know. The way that I do it is I go on Musicbed. This is not sponsored by them, but I do use Musicbed for a lot of the tracks I need for videos. Uh, they actually have a Spotify playlist. So when I'm like walking to the gym or something like that, I'll actually throw on a playlist that they have on there and tracks that I find that I really like, I make a note of them and then I go back at home and I listen to them and I try to find out if maybe one or so of them fit into a project that I'm working on. Next question is, what insurance, if any, do you have for your gear? I'm trying to get my FX3 and lenses covered. So I don't know what country you're actually from, but if you are in Canada, you can get something called front row insurance. Now that's the insurance that I use to cover my gear. Uh, I pay quite a bit because I do have a lot of stuff and I plan on having more things. Uh, and I also pay for renter's insurance as well because somewhere down the line, I'm gonna have way more gear that I'm gonna be able to use on a day, but I wanna actually start renting those out and making a little bit more money, but you do need the insurance for it at least in case somebody breaks it, like a uh, like a headphone jack on your Sony FX6. No hate there. What is your preferred lighting for workout and gym videos and photography? Now this is gonna be different depending on what I'm actually shooting, but I've really been liking the Nanlite set of lights. So I do have a bunch of Pavo tubes that I use the majority of the time. I've been using for the last like two-ish years, and I've actually recently switched my key light source from the Aperture 300D to the Nanlite Forza 300 for two different reasons. One, it's a lot lighter to carry around Honestly, that's a lot lighter to carry around. That's pretty much it. For photography, it's a little bit different now. 
Nowadays, I'm using a lot of continuous lights just because I don't want to have two different lighting setups, but I did use the Godox system of lights. Particularly, I had four Godox 8200 lights. Sometimes I would use a module to put some of them together so they had more power, but for the most part, I used those smaller, more strobe lights because they're light, they were compact, they were easy to maneuver, and you could also get a bonus mount attachment to do most of the things that you want to with them. All right, so if you're in this point of the video, either one of two things already has happened. One, you've actually made it this far into the video. In that case, congrats. If two, someone probably left a timestamp in the comment section and you just skipped to find out what this announcement is. It's not the biggest of deals, but I do have an online digital store that's on my website that has a couple of products that might be able to help you guys out. From Lightroom presets to a LUT pack that's made for DaVinci Resolve and other programs with a tutorial video in it, and even a pitch deck template that you can buy to help you with your clients, I've actually made everything in the store $10. So I do want to come out with new products in 2023, but I do want to get these into as many hands as possible so I can take some feedback to actually improve and make new digital products for next year. So in terms of doing that and to celebrate 5,000 subscribers and beyond, I did make everything that's currently on the store just 10 bucks. Uh, so these are YouTube questions. So Starter Pack asked, how long have you been shooting video? How did you find your niche and grow within it? Um, how did I find my niche? I actually played a lot of football when I was younger. Uh, then I ended up competing once, like five years ago. Uh, but I ended up competing in bodybuilding. And right around that time was where a lot of people were making fitness content. They were starting YouTube channels. People were doing photo shoots and it didn't become something that was super inaccessible. And at the time, honestly, I lost both my jobs and I went broke. So I decided to try taking up photography and video in that space. One, because it was familiar and two, I was already broke, so I didn't really have anything to lose in terms of time and shooting stuff for free and learning, uh, and that kind of exploded into what it is now. Um, in terms of how long that was, that would have been late 2018, so we're talking about four years around uh, I've been shooting for. All right, so here's one from Commando Creative, and is do you watch soccer and support Ghana? I watch soccer. I support Ghana. You can't be asking this after what just happened, <laughs> all right? Uh, so if you guys know, the World Cup is, is going on, um, and I I now have depression. Okay, next one's from Lock and Shake Films. Uh, I think this question's asking of whether or not I use S-Log or S-Cinetone, and is the Amaran 100D light strong enough to shoot in log? Uh, what I'm gonna say is depending on the ambient lighting conditions, that'll determine kind of whether or not your light is more powerful or not. If you're using a light, generally you're trying to overpower the sun because if the sun is brighter than the light that you're using and that's your main source of light, it becomes a little more difficult to kind of maneuver things. But if you're in a room that's dark, then yeah, the light's gonna be strong enough because it's much brighter than the rest of the room. Uh, in terms of using lights in log, you could use lights with any picture profile, really. With log, what it does, you get a little bit more dynamic range and a bit more flexibility. So different spots where there's different exposures from bright to dark, you're gonna get more opportunity to expose for those using log, where in Cinetone, it's great, but you don't have as many stops or opportunities to do that. Um, also, the thing with S Cinetone versus S-Log is S Cinetone, things are kind of colored for you in a Rec. 709 space, which basically means it looks normal, it's not flat and desaturated, where Log, particularly S-Log 3, is going to be saturated and a little bit flatter, where you have to grade it later. Okay, Christian J Media asks, how hard was your journey to 5K and what do I plan to grow my channel as well? Uh, it's also cool, you're almost at 5K yourself, so you'll be there in no time. But uh, how hard was it? Uh, it felt a little bit more difficult than I thought. Like I thought I was gonna hit somewhere in the 5,000s a couple months ago and that was just based on the fact that I was doing your normal sit at your desk talking about camera gear videos and those do well, so I figured, well, if I just keep doing those, then it'd be fine. Um, but I did get a little bit more guidance. You guys could see a video where my channel gets roasted. No one gives a rip. I don't care, I don't know who you are. Fair. I don't care why you love your promis book. Yeah. Well, of course you use cameras. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have used cameras? Fair. Just tell me the gear. But taking some of that advice and actually really creating a structured plan around who I'm making content for, what kinds of content I'm actually making, that did a lot for me and then things started to grow right away. And I started making moves and started doing things specifically to benefit the channel, but also to provide value to the people watching it, which is you guys. Now, in terms of how I actually wanna grow this channel, um, I'm actually gonna still do gear and technical videos. I like doing them now just because the Sony FX30 is a new item. There's a lot of controversy about it being a crop sensor and not being professional. 
another story for another time. But I do like getting out of the way all of the technical things because it helps me establish some of the characters, if you will, in the film series that actually is my YouTube channel. So when I go into behind the scenes and cinematography breakdowns and technique stuff, you won't ask, well, what camera and lens did you use? You can already see that in all of the library of videos that you've seen before. So that's kind of what the purpose is and how I actually wanna grow this channel. So you'll come in here probably because you saw some sort of gear review and hopefully you'll end up staying because I'm also teaching things that are past the point of after you buy a camera. Next question is top 10 mistakes filmmakers make. I'm not gonna give you 10, but I'm gonna give you three. And the first one is actually going to be comparing somebody's 10th film to your first one. There's a lot of content that's online and social media and YouTube and stuff like that that you can compare to. And a lot of times you feel like you're lacking in your journey when somebody else has probably been in it a little bit longer. Don't compare some of the first things that you're doing to someone's 10th year in the game. Uh, that's gonna be the thief of your joy. It's gonna be the thief of your curiosity. And overall, you're gonna spin your wheels chasing something that you shouldn't actually have to chase and shouldn't even want to chase to begin with. Comparison is often seen as a thief of joy and if you're constantly comparing yourself to films that other people are making and coming out with, what's going to end up happening is you're worried about someone else's grass instead of watering your own. Number two is thinking that you can do everything. Now I'm also guilty of this as well, but a lot of times when I'm making my own spec projects or even when I'm doing client work, I feel like that I can take on the entire world and every part of that process is supposed to be mine and mine alone from directing, producing, lighting, editing. And oftentimes we don't realize that it takes a village just like to raise a child, but it also takes a village to make a really good film. Not many times do you see the end credits of great movies and it only has one or two names that are on it. Oftentimes there's a ton of different people and a ton of different roles that are needed in order to make the end product. And whether or not you're making the next Avengers movie or you're making your short film, that's no different and you do need other people's help and you do have to put your trust and rely on other people's skill sets in order to make the final project that everybody's proud of. All right, and number three, and I'm actually gonna end the Q&A video on this one and it's actually not thinking about the business side of filmmaking or video production. Now, a lot of people wanna get their art out there. They wanna focus on that film or that piece of art that they wanna put out into the world for people to see, enjoy, and hopefully gain an audience from it. But one thing you also have to consider is that films require money, it requires planning, and having things under your belt, having different things working in the background that are helping funding your ventures is incredibly important. And that's kind of why I started this YouTube channel in general. I do know that I talk about a lot of gear videos, but I do have a lot of aspirations about documentary films and short films and other things in the video production realm, but I also understand that those things require a lot of money. And it's gonna become an uphill battle if you're just gonna hit up different brands and different people to fund this film, but you have nothing to show for it that gives them a return on investment. So the entire purpose of this YouTube channel is not only to provide value to you guys in terms of the technical and some of the things that I've learned, but it's also as a means to actually fund some of the projects that I want to do so so then I could just spin the block, come back and tell you guys about them again, giving you more value. And to lose sight of that, to lose sight of the revenue generating aspect of your video production or filmmaking business, I find is one of the single and biggest mistakes that I find a lot of people are making. That being said, I hope I answered a lot of important questions and thank you guys so much for 5,000 subs. I actually think we're a little bit past that at the time of this video, but I will be making a lot more videos. We're still keeping on the same thing we are, but I'm gonna add a lot more dimension and a lot more things that are helpful for you guys and hopefully you guys enjoy them. So that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.